In this screencast, we're going to continue developing your understanding of core sociological theories by looking at Marxism. And Marxism is a theory that shares some features in common with the functionalist perspective that we examined in the previous screencast. So like functionalism, Marxism is a macro perspective, so it looks at society as a whole, and also like the functionalist perspective, it's what we call a structural perspective. So it starts by standing back and looking at the overall structure of society and the influence that this has on individual behaviour. However, as you can see in this diagram, unlike the functionalist perspective, which is a consensus approach, Marxism is what we call a conflict approach. So Marxism is a perspective that starts from the assumption that society is set up to systematically benefit certain social groups at the expense of others. So rather than seeing society as being based on a value consensus that benefits everybody, which is the functionalist view, Marxism sees society based on conflict, and we're seeing this presentation that the focus is on class conflict, which they believe leads to sudden revolutionary change rather than the gradual evolutionary change that functionalists propose. And Marxism is a sociological perspective uh, based on the work of Karl Marx, who was without a doubt one of the most influential thinkers to emerge during the 19th century. And the ideas of Karl Marx had a huge impact on the history of the 20th century. So the ideas of Karl Marx were the inspiration for uh, revolutionary movements uh, around the world, from the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia in 1917, to the Chinese Revolution and Chairman Mao, to the Cuban Revolution and Fidel Castro and Che Guevara, uh, to Vietnam and Ho Chi Minh. You can't understand the history of the 20th century without appreciating the influence of Karl Marx. And by the peak of the Cold War in the 1960s, there were huge swathes of humanity that were living under governments that purported to be following the ideas of Karl Marx. So all of these countries that you can see on this map from the 1960s that have the colour red were governments that purported to be following the principles of Marxism, although in practice these were regimes that were very oppressive and totalitarian, and it's doubtful whether or not Karl Marx would have uh, appreciated the governments that were set up uh, in his name. So let's now look at some of the basic principles of the Marxist approach. And I mentioned in the previous screencast that sociological theories tend to have a very distinctive image of what society is and how it works. And I'm going to use this particular image to describe the Marxist perspective. And if you haven't worked out what this image is meant to represent, this is meant to be a building, uh, and this part of the diagram represents the foundations of the building. Now for Marxists, the foundation, if you like, of society is its economy, is its economic base or structure. And what we mean by the economy in this particular context is the way in which society generates wealth and meets the basic material needs of its population. So Marxists argue that if you want to understand how any society works, you need to start by looking at how society produces the goods and services that people uh, consume and need in order to survive. So this economic base, the foundation of society, consists of means of production and relations of production. So the means of production simply refers to all of the things that we use in order to make a living. So in our type of economic system, this would include things like land, factories, mines, shops, banks, etc. So all of the things that we need to produce goods and services within our economy.
Secondly, relations of production refers to the way in which people organise themselves to produce the things that are needed within their particular economy. So as people produce things, they enter into certain relationships. So in our society, for example, we have bosses and workers. So these relations, Marx called the relations of production. Now the other part of society, which is represented in this image by the actual building, Marx called this the superstructure. And this consists of social institutions and culture. So everything from the types of families that exist, the education system, uh, the laws, um, our political system, and so on. Collectively, Marx called these institutions and culture the superstructure. Now, for Marxists, just as the basis of any building is its foundations, the basis of any type of society is its economic structure. And this means that from a Marxist perspective, it's the economic system that's the basis for the rest of society. In other words, everything in the superstructure is determined and influenced by the economic base. And therefore this means that our legal system, our families, our education, our political system and all other social institutions serve the needs of the economic system. So Marxists argue if you want to understand how any society works, you need to begin by understanding its economic structure. And what this also means is that if any individual or group has control over the economic structure, then they gain power over the rest of society. In other words, the group that owns society, the group that owns the economic wealth, is the group that controls it. And most modern societies, including our own, are based on an economic structure known as capitalism. And a capitalist economy, I think, has two really important distinctive features. Firstly, within capitalism, most production, so the production of goods and services, is initiated and undertaken by private companies rather than the government. And these private companies are aiming to generate as much profit as they possibly can from this activity. And then secondly, because private companies are owned by a relatively small minority of the population, the rest of the population have to sell their labour uh, in order to make a living. So within capitalism, most work is performed by individuals who have to work for somebody else uh, in return for wages or a salary. So Marxists argue that this type of economic system creates two main social classes called the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. Now the bourgeoisie are the bosses of the economic system. So this is a relatively small group of individuals, perhaps representing no more than 1 or 2 percent of the population, who own and control the bulk of private corporate wealth and as a result face no compulsion to work in order to support themselves. The vast majority of the population are the social class that Marx called the proletariat, what we might call the workers. And because they own little or nothing, they're the class that are forced to sell the one thing that they do own, which is their ability to labour, their ability to work, uh, in order to make a living. And as you can see from this cartoon, Marxists believe that within capitalism, there's always a conflict of interest between the owners, the bourgeoisie, who are seeking to maximise their profits, and the workers, the proletariat, who strive to obtain the best possible wages and conditions. So class conflict is built into the system of capitalism. And according to Marxists, these relationships between bosses and workers, or to use the jargon, bourgeoisie and proletariat, result in the workers being exploited. So we have an economic system 
that benefits maybe 1% of the population at the expense of the other 99%, according to the Marxist theory. And Marxists argue that the proletariat are being exploited by the bourgeoisie in the sense that they're paid less than the value of the work that they produce. So, for example, uh, Nike workers working in the Dominican Republic are paid on average just three tenths of one percent of the retail price of the shirts that they actually make. So what we call profit from a Marxist perspective is the difference between the value of the workers' labour and what they're actually paid for it. So given that workers are only receiving a tiny fraction of what their labour power is really worth, the next question for Marxists is why do the working class put up with this type of exploitation? And according to the French Marxist Louis Althusser, there are two main reasons for this. Firstly, because the bourgeoisie control the political system, according to Althusser, they are in control of what he calls the repressive state apparatus. And what he means by this are things like the police, the courts, the army, etc., which can be used to control the workers in times of conflict and social unrest. But much more importantly, Althusser argues that the other uh, way in which the bourgeoisie are able to control the working class is through their control of what he calls the ideological apparatus. So when Marxists talk about ideological power and control, they're talking about the ability of the bourgeoisie, through their control of things like the media, to shape people's minds in terms that favour the interests of that particular group. In other words, ordinary people are made to think as the bourgeoisie want them to think. So through their control of things like the media, the political system, the education system, the bourgeoisie had the ability to put across their interests, their values, their beliefs, and convince the rest of society to accept them. And therefore, like functionalists, Marxists argue that there are common values and beliefs in society into which we're all socialised, but that this works in the interests of the bourgeoisie rather than the whole of society. So from this perspective, the working class are persuaded that the system is fair, or at the very least that there's no credible alternative. And Marxists call this lack of awareness false consciousness and believe that it helps to prevent revolution. However, Marxists argue that the working class constitute a sleeping giant and that once they become aware of the true nature of their exploitation and overcome their false consciousness, they're in a position where they can overthrow capitalism and in time establish a new economic system based on the common or joint ownership of the means of production, an economic system that Marx called communism. Okay, so we finished our introduction to the Marxist perspective. What you must make sure that you go on to do now that you finish with this screencast is that you go on to iLearn and you complete the online lesson on Marxism, which will really help to reinforce and develop your understanding of this important perspective.